think that's super important to recognize, right? That that it's not just the government that has the capacity to create demand that exceeds supply, right? Mm -hmm. Under lots of different types of circumstances, the profit motive would incentivize the, the private sector to grant credit to to facilitate projects that would then have the same effect because you're you're you know pulling demand, you're increasing demand relative to supply or whatever, right? So so that's important to know. I don't think that that's what has happened though in the in the current no. uh, environment, right? So I, I want to sort of move to this because I think MMT gets a lot of blame for the current inflationary impulse. And so I first of all I want to go back to what was the economic framework in Washington when these um, policies were being considered in response to pandemic lockdowns, for example, right? So let's go back to mid-2020. Was the conversation in Washington, everybody embracing the, the framework of MMT and then how would MMT um, approach this problem? Or was there some, a completely different framework uh, at work and all of the policies that were enacted were in the context of that framework, right? So is MMT even to blame here or does it like, what role does it even play, first of all? Yeah, and we, we, I didn't get there and when we first started saying what is MMT because, you know, this is a pro mostly directed at people who deal with finance and business. But one of the other big parts of the MMT story is if you understand that the reason that people need to earn money is because they need to earn it to pay public authorities that force them to earn it in the first place. You know, there was a post-Keynesian sort of MMT adjacent economist named Paul Davidson who used to say, uh, fish are never involuntarily unemployed. Um, they might be bored, but... but Unemployment is a monetary phenomenon. It's the act of looking for paid work in money and not being able to find it. So if you think about it that way, and there's one actor that makes you know the money, or at least the most important money, then unemployment is is a is a policy choice. We could pay people not to, just like ignorance and illiteracy is a policy choice because we choose not to pay people to learn how to you know pay people to teach people how to read, um, and. I think it was Darwin who said, you know, if, if the sins if if the sins of man are not, you know, from nature, then uh, you know, if, if the if the misery of man is not from nature but from humans, then you know, great great is our sin. And like, if, if unemployment is not some natural thing out there, but is because we've deliberately created it, then it's a huge problem. And one of the things that MMT tries to do by helping people understand money is understanding that we can and should be demanding everybody at the bare minimum, bare minimum has the ability to earn money by giving their labor to, to not starve and not be poor and destitute. Um, so natural rate of unemployment in your mind is a travesty of a concept. Absolute travesty of a concept. It's used to justify keeping inflation balanced on the back of the unemployed on the theory that if the workers get too agitated, then they'll ask for too many raises. And we're seeing that right now. We've had lowest, largest increases in the lower end of the wage spectrum in years. And what's everyone saying right now? Central bankers around the world are saying, the labor market is too tight, which is another way of saying you just throw some of these bastards out of work, which I find abhorrent, right? And they're saying that at the same time as the companies who set the prices, right? It's not the unions that set the prices. It's the companies are posting record profits. So you've got the labor share of income and you've got the profit share of income. The profit share is going through the roof and everyone's saying the problem is the labor share is too big. You know, shock, shock horror that they always find a way to blame the working class. But that idea that unemployment is something that is intrinsic to the MMT framework to understand how we can overcome it and understand how it's a monetary design is one that often gets lost in the standard story because the stuff about budgets and maybe secondarily the stuff about banking is much more sexy to most people who care about this stuff. You know, I don't normally read the Wall Street Journal care about working class power building anytime soon, but they do care about budgets. And they do care about banking regulation. So that's how they understand MMT. So to your question in Congress, was anyone proposing a job guarantee? I mean, I know who was proposing because I worked with them to draft the bill. The Biden administration wasn't interested, right? They shut that down very early on. So we had millions of people unemployed and not saying that they should have all gone to work at work, but we could have employed them in jobs during the pandemic, including things remotely, including just paying them to stay at home, like idle, like a, you know, National Guard reserve. And we, we could have avoided the massive unemployment hits that happened at that point. Um, but certainly that wasn't in the mix at all. 
And so to your question, I think the reality is, first of all, you're much more optimistic than I am that there was any coherent framework going on in DC, you know, and they're sort of grabbing for whatever they can in the moment. But certainly I think there were enough people on the Democratic side that had learned the lesson from 2008 and 9 that pivoting to deficit reduction and all of that was a terrible mistake. It, it, it prolonged the anemic recovery. It was the wrong thing politically. It was tone deaf. It didn't help people. And they didn't want to make that mistake again. And MMT had been in their ear for a decade telling them that. There were people like Congressman John Yarmouth, who was the head of the House Budget Committee, and obviously Senator Bernie Sanders, who was the head of the Senate Budget Committee, who had Stephanie Kelton as his chief economist. And John Yarmouth was out there trumpeting Stephanie's book saying, it's because of this book that we're not having that terrible debate about running out of money. You know, there was a moment in 2009 where I think it was President Obama did a 60 Minutes interview and they said, are we out of money? He said, well, we're out of money right now. And, you know, that, that, that was the moment where my hope died for sure. You know, yes, we can. Apparently, no, we can't. And this time around, at least early on, and now, of course, you're hearing Biden tout balanced budgets again. But early on, I wrote an article that was in a sort of front page of The Nation magazine where Biden had said, you know, we will do whatever it takes with this crisis and the money will not come from you as a taxpayer, it will come from us at the Treasury. That was the, that was the framework at the beginning of this crisis. These $2 trillion, $3 trillion bills were passed without a price tag, without debates over pay-fors, and we've had the largest recovery of any major crisis in, in, in over a century. I mean, we ha we, we're dealing with other supply chain problems today. We're dealing with other problems, but we really need to take credit, I think, for, for the fact that if you look at the recovery, it looks like this versus like this, this very slow 10-year...